Ladies and gentlemen, we are back with another TheMMAtakeover.com interview. My name is Keith Schillen. Today's guest is a perfect 5-0 and in mixed martial arts. She's one of the top female prospects in all of mixed martial arts. And she's making her UFC debut at the Ultimate Fighter Season 25 finale on July 7th when she takes on Jessica Evil Eye. Ladies and gentlemen, Aspen Lad. Aspen, how you doing? I'm doing absolutely fantastic. Happy to be here. Great, great. Um, I'm glad you're doing well. Um, you're actually someone that I've got to watch their entire career, which is so cool. Um, being on Invicta, um, obviously you're on Fight Pass, um, being a hardcore fan and a media <laughs> member. Um, it's kind of cool that there's very few people you can say that you can watch your entire professional career if you wanted. I mean, that's, that's pretty cool. Definitely. I was very, very fortunate to start my pro career with Invicta, so it's all out there. Yeah. Um, so, let, so let's back up a little bit. Um, I always ask all the fighters, um, you have a very unique story. You started, basically you started mixed martial arts at 14, am I right? I did. Okay, just just tell us, like, you're a 14-year-old girl, you're, you're a teenager. Most 14-year-old girls are, you know, chasing this guy and that guy or taking selfies or you know you're you decide oh, i, I want to get into i want to get into breaking people's bones or beating people up like like how this what, what gave you this desire oh wait, that was never me i was always a very um quiet and shy kind of kid uh-huh. and i was absolutely and get into a team environment honestly when you are 14 which is when i started you see guys for what they are i'm not saying you're all pigs <laughs> but, but, saying, but we are girl, girl you're watching a bunch of womanizers, and they see this one like crud, that one like crud. Like, ooh, I don't want any part of that. So I was, I was never really a boy chaser. Okay. But yeah, mixed martial arts. I got started because I was a really, really shy kid, and I needed something to do. Uh huh. And I found MMA. I had no idea what it was when I walked into the gym, but I knew within a week that I wanted to fight when I turned eighteen. Well, yeah, and and you did. You you uh, you know, you've been a fighter. Yep. You're- you're five and zero now, professional. You had a very good amateur career. Now, um, do you consider yourself still shy, or is that you know you now you're fighting in front of millions of people? You're doing interviews with me, with probably <laughs> ho- hopefully millions of people listen to you know. Um, like, do you still consider yourself shy? You know, not so much. It's more of a quiet person. It, and I think I'm always going to be that way. Some people are born extroverted and they love this and that. Sure. And they like to speak to be the center of attention. That's not necessarily me, but you can learn to do anything, especially with a sport. You kind of have to promote yourself. Uh huh. So um, we did it. We did it. What we call a Q and A um, with Nick mm-hmm. Portella. He did it. Um, basically, it's ri- our fancy way of calling it a written interview. And in the interview, one thing that really stood out, because I, you know, I want to do my prep before I go. I was reading some of your answers, and one cool thing is you said I'm going to be in the UFC. I'm going to be in it really soon. And now you are. Yeah. That interview was only a couple months ago. Um, so congratulations on that. Um, fantastic to see you go from, you know, the regional, or I shouldn't say regional because Invex is not regional, but going from a, the, a lower organization to the top organization. So congratulations on that. Um, yeah. Did you, you said really soon. Did you expect it this soon? It's been my goal from day one, from the day that they accept the women to go see, okay, now I'm, I'm going to go pro. I'm going to go in Invicta. I'm going to go undefeated. And then I'm going to the UFC. So I've known from day one that was my goal. And that's all I've had my mindset on. And after my last fight, honestly, it was either, okay, I'm either going to fight one more time with Invicta or I'm going to get the call. That was just my mindset. And I knew what I wanted. Now I said, if you just put it out there and you continue to um, promote that and work hard, good things come to you. And that's what happened with the situation. Okay. Now, um, you know, you got your first fight. You're going against Jessica I. How's it? How's the training camp going for this? Um, excellent. Okay. Uh, um, so you're with MMA Gold. Um, mm-hmm. it is a team. Um, if I'm being honest, there's not too many big names. Um, I know Max Griffin is yeah. with you guys. He just he just um, yeah. fought in the UFC. Uh, he just picked up his first win in the UFC. Um, so so name drop mm-hmm. a little bit. Let let us know who's the next person. Like you just got to call UFC. Who's the next one? I think it's going to be Anthony Fluffy Hernandez. He's an 85er, also undefeated at um, 5-0. and He's got a fight here coming up. but he, And he's not just 5-0. and He's five first-round finishes, all, all right. good opponents. I think that's the next one. Okay. And then we have Sam Kimmer as well, but his only problem is he's a 45er, and there's so many of them waiting to get in. Sure. Also yeah, yeah. extremely talented. 
but I think those two will definitely be in by the end of the year. All right. I mean, it's good. It's good that you, you know, your team is starting to get recognized. You're getting, you know, you kind of mm-hmm. jumping on the scene. You're getting people in the UFC. Um, obviously, uh, I mean, that that must be fun. That must be like make training feel. Mm-hmm. You know, I know training's tough and training's a grind, but seeing people succeed, yeah. seeing you succeed, seeing um, Griffin succeed. I mean, that must be just motivation for the whole team, right? Oh, definitely. If one, when one of them succeeds, it trickles down to everybody. When the team does better, the individual does better. When the ind- individual rises up, the team rises up. So we're all, sure, you have your own individual career and your own individual path you need to work on, but we are a team. And when one of us goes up, so does the, the rest of them. All right. And it, what's really cool is our team is still so young. We've only been around, like, what, four years now? Yeah. And we got people in the UFC. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's that's actually really cool. That's um, and, and a lot of times there's people who are in smaller mm-hmm. teams, and, and I don't want to say you're a small team because there's a lot of teams smaller than you, but I think you know what I'm saying with this. There's a lot of times there's really good people in small teams that don't get the attention than someone who might even be not as good in a major team. You, you know what I mean? That's very true. Yeah, uh, definitely. But um, I think a big part of that is honestly the people you surround yourself with as far as your coaches and your management, definitely. Yeah. Because... As I said earlier, you have to self promote, but you also need a very, very savvy manager to help you out. Yeah. And one of the big benefits we have here with Dave Hirschbein is what he does, and he's great at it. Yeah. So not only are we skilled in promoting ourselves, he is talking to the right people to get us to where we need to be. Yeah. Yeah. Congrats for him, man. Uh, you know, he's building a name for himself too, while building a great name for the team. Um, so let's talk about this. Uh, obviously, you're making your do- debut. Have Have you got any advice from anybody else who's been in the UFC? Kind of give you, you know, heads up what to expect. Like, hey, you know, make sure you do this, or make sure you do that, or don't don't stress about this, or stress about this. Like, what? A- any advice you've gotten? Um, honestly, most of the advice has been um, surrounding around USADA and the okay. UFC. When you like, I wasn't expecting this, but when you join them, they're on you about everything constantly like from media to the medicals to USADA constantly like it's a daily thing yeah so they leave no stone unturned as far as if you have questions I can't even think of one they haven't already had the answer to okay um is a- anything seem overwhelming or is it just are you enjoying this moment um I'm just honestly it is like all the the media and the medicals and all that back forth, but it's just it's normal. I'm used to that, and I'm just enjoying the fact that hey, I have to do all the stuff I've been doing for years, but now it's for the UFC. Yeah, I, I mean, I mean, it's it's a little different for you, being that you started right in Invicta, you started in a major organization, mm-hmm. you started, you know, right away. You're on TV, or I, I should say, Fight Pass. You're on Fight Pass where millions of people can see. Um, it's it's different than going from a small organization, going from a uh, CES MMA or, 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 you know, one of these regional ones. I mean, you've been there. Where mm-hmm. you, you know, your name, you've been out there. You have a lot of buzz. I mean, I'm one of the ones, I'm leading the parade. I'm like, hey, this chick should have been in before. Uh, and, and I'm <laughs> huge on you. So and, and um, so so let's talk about the actual fight. Um, you're going against Jessica I. Um, mm-hmm. She's been a veteran. She's been around for a while. She's been around in the UFC for a while. Um, she's, yeah. a, she's a difficult opponent, for especially someone making their debut. Um, mm-hmm. when I look at you, I see a very well-rounded fighter, you know, like we do these breakdowns and we, you know, all, all of us in the media, we think we're experts and we always say, you know, we always try to pick, pick apart every small little detail. Um, if I'm analyzing your game and, and tell me where I'm wrong, cause obviously you know your game better than I do. I see someone who wants to go right out there. You get right in their face. There's like, there's like no failing out. You're right in the pocket. Um, you do great work with your lead hand. You have a great jab. You have a great hook, and you have a really you have a re- like. And, and, and please don't, I don't mean this negatively, but women's MMA, uh, women's wrestling is different than men's wrestling. But you have a really good shot, <laughs> like which most women they don't have a really good shot. Like you have a really good double leg takedown. Um, Thank you. So. And I have no idea where I'm going on this rant about you because we were supposed to be talking about Jessica, <laughs> Jessica's game. So anyways, <laughs> that was just my way of, of kind of basically painting the picture of what I think of you to anybody who might not have seen you yet. Now, most people who listen to this interview have probably seen a lot of Jessica. When you look at yeah. Jessica, what stands out Do you say, okay, I have to be aware of this? And then on the flip side, where do you say, okay, I definitely have 
a huge advantage here? Um, we'll, we'll try to cover a little bit of this. I'm not one that really likes to talk about game plans or this night because this. I gotta try it. Sounds like I gotta try. <laughs> oh yeah, you. It's kind of like a, a standard media guy thing. It's like, okay, let's see what we can get out of this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're on. You're on to me. Um, yeah. No, as far as Jessica goes, the word used for veteran. That's that's the first thing I see when it comes to my when um, I think about her. So she's been there a long time. She's had the experience several times over. She's fought big names. She's more of a um, a boxer. She likes to move. She likes sure. to use fast in and out, that kind of person. Sure, yep. And the way that you just described me is fairly fairly accurate. I don't like to feel out. I don't like to run around. I like to be right in the pocket fighting. Because, honestly, when you get right down to it, nobody wants to see that. Nobody wants to see somebody running around like, oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to maybe try to win. I'm, I'm, I don't want to lose. I don't want to lose. Sure. If you fight that way, you're going to lose, and nobody wants to watch it. Yeah. So we'll just see how our styles match up. Yeah, I mean, it goes down to, like, what we watched this past weekend with Holly Holm and, and Betch Correa. I mean, the fantastic part of the fight was a knockout. The rest of the fight was yeah. terrible, you know. It, <laughs> and, and one point, the referee had to get them together and say, hey, come on, guys, like, you got to fight. Um, yeah. So, the, obviously, the you mentioned her experience, and... and Obviously, that's her advantage. You know, she's 30 years old. You're 22. Uh, she's got that's eight. I'm sorry, what? I said that is correct. Okay. I thought you were correct in your age. Um, she's got 18 <laughs> fights. You have five professional. I know you have amateur, but I'm just, just professional fights. She has eight fights in the UFC. You're making the debut. Um, yeah. The naysayers, the haters, whatever, the people are going to put against you, that's probably going to be the first thing they go to. Okay, Jessica, she's got more experience. She's fought some really big names. Um, that's where, you know, Misha Tate, she's fought Sarah McMahon, um, Betch Correa. She's fought some big names. Um, that's how the, the people going against you is going to pick her. Tell me why mm -hmm. they're wrong, like why the experience won't won't factor. It's not experience how long you've been in. It's how much you've progressed in that time period. It's not between every fight, okay, so I have another one under my belt. I have another one under my belt. If you're taking time off between that, if you're not progressing as a fighter between fights, it does not matter. You have to improve yourself. You have to be back in the day you get back from the last fight. Yeah. You have to be working to improve what you did wrong. So it's not the amount of time you have in. It's the amount of improvement you have in. Uh -huh. Um, I, I recently watched an interview, and I don't know how much you like to watch your opponents. Some people like to know everything about them. Some people, they want to stay away, clear their mind. Um, I recently watched an interview with her, and she said something that really stood out to me. Um, and she was complimentary of your game. And, and, and I don't wouldn't call Jessica a trash target by any means, and I think you'd agree with that. Um, but one thing she did say that really stood out to me, at one point she goes, everyone knows I'm going to win. And that was like, wow, like, I'm... Do you, th when you hear me say that, and, and I know obviously you got to put it in context because I'm I'm paraphrasing, not giving the whole interview. But when you hear her say something like that, do you believe that she's looking past you, or maybe underestimating you? It does sound that way, but yeah, no, I'm not really one to watch my opponents at all. I don't stalk any of their stuff. I don't care about it. You end up focusing too much on them. Not enough on what you do. Okay. Um, obviously, you're undefeated. Do you feel any e extra pressure being undefeated, like trying to protect that, or do you feel like, hey, it's just another fight? Nope. Every fight, um, you, you can't really live on your past ones, whether it's 5-0 and oh or 5-5. Five and five. It doesn't matter. I'm not looking back. I'm not looking in the past my past fights. The only thing that matters is the one ahead. There's no extra pressure more so than any other fight in this world. Okay. Every fight's the most important, and every opponent's the most dangerous. All right. Um, so one thing you mentioned earlier, you talked about marketing. That marketing is important. You obviously you can't be shy. You got to put yourself out there marketing. Um, I always feel like mm -hmm. men and females get marketed completely different. Men get marketed by how much trash they talk. Females get marketed by how pretty they are or how much they flaunt their beauty. Um, obviously, girls like Paige Van Zant and Michelle Waterson are very pretty. They get pushed that way, and other females have already complained about that. So, so my question is in. I think you're a very pretty girl. Um, you're young, 22 years old. I mean, uh, my question is, do you do you feel that you need to market like sexuality or beauty? Are you willing to do it, and is it something that you want to do? As far as like um, the beauty thing goes, honestly, it is unfair, and I don't think it should be there. But that's that's what your daily life is. 
the better looking person is going to get more opportunities. And yeah. it's, it's unfortunate because I think it should be all based on skill, but it isn't. As far as basically selling out or selling your, like, hey, look at me, look at the panty shot. No, I'm never going to be that person. Okay. I think it's disgusting. But it doesn't mean that you can't use it for like, okay, I'm going to promote myself, but you got to be classy, man. I don't, like this fighter is, what's her name? Um, Angela Magana. Yeah. yeah. And then there's a couple other ones. Yeah. They're just, I think they're disgusting. You can't be, oh, look at, I'm so pretty, look at my body. Yeah. When actually basically selling out that way. Yeah. You got to have skills. It can't just be, oh, look at me. It's terrible. It's far, yeah. I wish it wasn't around, but it's, it's undeniable. It's there. If you you have to be able to market yourself, you have to be somewhat attractive. Yeah. And then there's a handful of guys that they do, they do get the same thing, but they have skill on top of it. There's a handful sure. of girls where they're just good looking. They don't have much else. Yeah, I, I heard an interview recently with Megan Anderson. This is actually probably a while back, and 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 she's very skilled, very very skilled. She's very pretty, and she yeah. she's not scared to put it out there. Tanya Evinger is a mm-hmm. girl who's very skilled, but she doesn't market her prettiness at all. Megan Anderson recently got brought into the UFC. Tanya Evans is still waiting. And do you, I mean, do you believe something like that's a factor? Like why one's in the UFC and one's not? Um, I think Megan is in the UFC because she is fresh blood. And I like her, by the way. I think she's a cool person. No. But um, I think she's, because she's, she's fresh blood. She's attractive. And it is, Tanya, she's already been there. Everybody knows her. Everybody knows her name. But she's been in and she failed. And she's doing extremely well in Invicta. Who knows? Maybe she doesn't want to come over again. Yeah. But I do know that Megan has been pushing for it for a long time. And she has all the other little things that can make you succeed. So I think that's why she's there and Tanya isn't. Okay. Um, we have we have a lot of gamblers uh, that listen. They always want to they always want to have the inside. They don't care who I predict. They always love to hear who the fighters predict. So um, I want to get some predictions out of you. Obviously, you're taking part of International Fight Week. It's a huge week. Um, this back to back mm-hmm. events. The main event of the card you're on is Michael Johnson versus Justin Gaethje. Who do you like to win that mm-hmm. fight? Gaethje. Okay. Any any reason? I like his style. He doesn't go out. Um, like I was saying earlier, I don't really go out to just steal him out. Oh, maybe I'm going to win. That dude goes out to kill people. I enjoy watching it. Okay. Um, in, in the women's, uh, the very next night, the women are, are headlining the card. It's in your weight class. Amanda uh, Nunez and mm-hmm. Valentina Shevchenko. I'm sure that's a fight you're very interested in. Um, who do you think is going to win that one? Ooh, that's a tough one. Honestly, I enjoy watching both of them. Yeah, it's a good you one. You know, just because Val- Valentina's been so close. And I don't know which one. It's, it's like 50-50 there. Okay. I'll just go with Valentina because she she lost the first one, but it wasn't by much. No. If she can draw the fight out, the longer she goes, the more chance she's out of winning. Okay. So right now I'm filling out my, my, my parlay. I got Justin Gaethje clicked. I got Valentina Shevchenko. And I and I obviously I throw you in. And the game was going on now. How do you win? What round? What method? How's your fight end? As my own fight end? Yep. Ooh, I, I'm not going to take you that far, man. We're just going to go with it. It's going to be a win. Okay. All right. So, yeah. All right. She's. I will tell you, she is more fierce in the cage than she is with her predictions. She 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 chickened out on giving us a uh, giving us a round and method. I tried, guys. So don't 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 kill me for it. Um, <laughs> one one question I have before I let you go. Um, I know you used to fight at 125. You moved up to 135. Obviously, the UFC has talked about putting in 125 division. I know you've talked in the past about just getting older, your body changes. You, you're staying yeah. at 135, correct? Definitely. There's no okay. way I could physically make 25s anymore. Okay. All right. I just I wanted to make sure. I f- kind of figured that was the answer. Um, I just wanted to make sure on record. Um, because your your opponent Jessica has actually been talking about going down. So, um, yeah. All right. Um, I appreciate you taking the time to speak with us. I got one more question for you. Um, have you submitted to the takeover? This is Aspen Latin. I have submitted to the MMA takeover. Uh, Aspen, I appreciate you taking time. I wish you luck in this fight, and I welcome to the MMA takeover family. Sweet. Thank you. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, that was an interview with UFC fighter Aspen Ladd. Make sure to check out her fight at UFC... F- I'm sorry. I'm sorry. At UFC... I'm, I'm totally messing up. This is why she's a professional and I'm a bum. 
She is fighting at the Ultimate Fighter Season 25 finale on July 7th when she takes on Jessica Evil Eye. Also, to see the best MMA coverage, head over to our website, TheMMATakeover.com. That's TheMMATakeover.com. Make sure you follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Hope you like listening. Thanks.